doctrinal of Arminianism and Calvinism in the sense of the substance of faith. Uh, the substance of faith is the gospel. The gospel is defined in basic terms like 1 Corinthians 15. Does the gospel require that we believe in election? No. Galatians is Paul explaining the gospel against the Judaizers. So there's the basic gospel, but you don't find in Galatians predestination or election as you find it in Ephesians and Romans. But the gospel is there. So there can be a gospel faith that may not be reformed. Becoming reformed is not equivalent to becoming Christian. Let us be clear about that. We have brethren who are Armenian in their theology. Now, now does that mean it's no big deal? Uh, that's not the meaning. Every error is damaging, but not every error is damning. We must make a distinction between heresy and plain error. Uh, we take seriously Arminianism, and if you know where GMA stands, we take seriously our Reformed theology. But we must not do so to the point of excluding the others who also are believers in Jesus Christ. It is Christianity that is exclusive, not Reformed uh, theology. Other questions? Is it? Sean. Good morning, Papa Pastor. Uh, dalawa po yung question ko regarding sa eternal generation. Una po is, paano po yung mga evangelical na, yun nga po yung view, na naging son of God lang si Christ nung doon sa declaration niya. Na hindi, uh, walang eternal generation. Kung maging distinction ng father and son, nangyari lang doon sa declaration. And second question is, Pwede po, bu, pwede po ba nating sabihin na doon sa kanyang declaration as son of God, doon din po yung kasama na po doon yung, mga, yung three offices niya as prophet, priest, and king? Well, first, doon sa uh, those who do not believe the eternal generation, well, actually, we are not yet there dito sa course. We're just uh, doon sa point na he is the son of God. When did he become son of God? He is eternal son of God. Later, we will see that that denotes eternal generation. But eternal generation is the language of theology, which is consistent and reflective of scripture, but it is not itself scripture language. So we must make that distinction. So I do not want to make the genuineness of one's gospel faith be based on theological language. Otherwise, we will displace so many uh, genuine, humble Christians who yet do not come up to theological accuracy of their thinking. So it is enough that one sees Christ as Lord and Savior, and the only way to God is the Lord Jesus Christ, and that summary of the gospel. But, of course, we do not discount the necessity of theology to deepen one's faith, and that includes we want Armenians to see what real grace is apart from uh, salvation by grace versus salvation by works. We want them to see that grace means more in terms of the eternal election and so on. Now, as to Romans 1.4, the declaration of Jesus as the Son of God with power, uh, does that include the three offices? Yes, again, uh, in terms of what he has earned through his resurrection. Remember that we are talking here of lordship, not as the divine lordship of Jesus. He has always been that lord in, from eternity. But we are talking of mediatorial lordship. And Acts 2.36 says, uh, he made him lord and Christ as a result of the resurrection. So there is in the resurrection, death, death and resurrection, the way to Christ becoming the Lord that he is as mediator, not the Lord as God, but the Lord as mediator between God and sinners. That lordship is earned. The divine lordship is essential, but the, the mediatorial lordship is earned. So his declaration as son of God in, uh, with power and glory, as Romans 1 4 says, I believe includes 
all the mediatorial lordship, and that includes the threefold office. We will learn that later. Other questions? Other questions? Um, good morning, Pastor. I'm Erwin from Living of Evangelical, Italy. Uh, I have a question about Jesus Christ. Um, uh, being 100% man and 100% God, how can we balance the situation when Jesus Christ died on the cross? Uh, we will learn that later when we come to the divinity, humanity of Jesus Christ. Remember what I said? And this will always be the challenge. He is one person. With two natures, divine, human. Now, everything he did, he did as person. So it's not like, uh, oh, I'm going to be hungry. I'll let the human nature do it. Oh, I'm going to walk on water. Now, this time, my divine nature will do it. That will be compartmentalizing the singularity of the person. That's the very reason for the Chalcedonian statement is so that we can maintain one person without confusion of any of the natures. So even when we come to the death of the cross, we must talk of the God man in one person who did the crucifixion. Now to be hamstrung by discussion, what about his divine nature, did it die? Or, uh, that is to uh, shift the focus on the person, from the person. So you must focus on the person, the Lord Jesus Christ, and not be bogged down by which nature did what, uh, because that will, that will be, again, historianism, uh, where you separate too much the nature that you actually have two persons. But we will have more of that when we come to uh, his works and the combination of divine nature and human nature. Other questions? Okay, let's take a break. <laughs> 